Hi, I'd like to finish off what I started earlier. This is a Decoder Buddy Mini. A lot of you folks are going to have stationary decoders. That's Chip Quick. I use that for flux. The uh, Mini is going to be a lot like a lot of the decoders that you have uh, in-house. It's going to have a couple pads for motors, and I want to show you how I would put a TVS on a decoder that doesn't have a removable board for lighting. What I'm doing here is I'm just tinning the pads. This is the method I don't like, where you take a little bit of solder and tin a pad with uh, the solder on the uh, soldering iron. See, it, it, just, just, it isn't consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of solder from a uh, soldering wire, a fine soldering wire, so I get a small amount onto the pad. So now we have two tinned pads, and there's the TVS. And what I'm going to do is just take and add just a little bit of flux on each of the pads. Now this is going to go like a resistor addition again. You can see the Decoder Buddy Mini doesn't have resistors on it, and I will have to do that eventually on that one anyway. It's going to solder up pretty easily. After getting it positioned pretty well, just a touch of the soldering iron to, to melt that solder into place is all you need. That should be enough, but look, it's not in the right position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that soldering iron on there just a little bit longer, move the TVS into the position I want, and then come around to the back side and just relieve any strain in there. Set it exactly where I want it. Hold it there. And now it's set. That should be all that's necessary. The next thing that is going to have to happen is we're going to need some uh, leads from the motor. So I'm going to take a, just a scrap piece of wire to show you what's happening. Strip it. And those are the wire strippers that I really like. I, I, those are my favorite, my favorite pair of my favorite wire strippers. They strip anything up to uh, 14, even 12 gauge wire if I needed it. This wire is probably in the range of 28, maybe 30 at the very most. Just a little bit of little bit more flux. I really like that pin vise with the fifteen thousandths wire in it. It just gives me a lot of control of where that flux and how much flux is actually going onto uh, onto a part. And these are huge parts. Working an 0201 LED and on uh, 40 gauge magnet wire is uh, is the size that I'm used to using. You can see just a quick touch of the soldering iron with a little bit of solder on it, and that flux will uh, attach that motor wire. The representat representation of the motor wire in this case doesn't take very long. If you stay around there very long, that whole uh, TVS is gonna is gonna float around on you. Same thing on this side. Get it positioned. Get it held. Not doing a very good job of holding it tonight, are I? Oh well. That's all there is to it. Um, if those were motor wires, you'd be all set to go. All the protection you got and needed right there, and it's all on uh, all on two pads. 
the distance between those two pads is pretty seems to be pretty standard in the industry. Um, I think uh, the pads that I've I have on my uh, existing uh, decoders are about the same distance apart. So this procedure should work pretty well for you. That one's all set. Now, if you don't want to do it that way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip strip the wire again, and I'm going to make a TVS that's going to look a lot like a Stay Alive from the manufacturers. Um, essentially, it's going to be the TVS with two wires soldered on that will... Uh, solder onto the same pads as the motor leads on the decoder and uh, I'm going to end up by covering it with a little piece of 3 8 heat shrink tubing that I have kept, had kicking around and what the heat shrink tubing will do is it'll just insulate the whole assembly from shorting out against anything else in the motor. So we've got fluxed leads, a little bit of flux on each of the uh, pads of the uh, TVS. And this will be a fairly quick operation also. This time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of solder on the on the soldering iron tip. And just briefly melt some solder on there. You can see I'm not using very much solder. That's pretty that's probably thirty one thousandths solder. So just just a just a taste of solder. Doesn't go on exactly right, put it on where you want it. Bing, there it is. I mentioned earlier that it was easier to uh do the actual work and find the parts. Now I'm going to go off for a couple minutes and uh, see if I can find uh, that uh, heat shrink tubing. I'll disappear for a second. Be back. Okay, we're back again. Found the uh, heat shrink tubing. It's 3 8 inch heat shrink tubing. Just some that I had kicking around. Going to just slide that TVS in it and have enough wire so that after when I heat it a little bit and I'm being lazy I'm not going to get out the uh, heat shrink gun or hot air I'll just warm it up with the soldering iron and make it small this should be enough to protect the TVS and the joints from any other contact with any metal surfaces in the uh, locomotive. What we'll do with this now is just cut the end off and have a finished product. To add that to the two pads that you saw on the on the Decoder Buddy Mini with two uh, Two more pairs of motor wires uh, will be very straightforward. I'm not going to show that. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward, and you should be able to do that. There you go. A finished TVS ready to mount onto two motor mounts with your two motor wires.